Here's the next example of using the linear factorization theorem and I'm going to write it just like they would have it in the textbook in terms of uh, your homework. It says find the nth degree polynomial function whose real coefficient satisfies the given conditions. If you are using a graphing utility use the graph uh, use it to graph the function and verify the real zeros and given function value. So what they have is they have this. Uh, the first part is actually our degree. So when they talk about n is equal to 2, they say to the nth degree. So this is talking about the degree of our polynomial. And then the next part are the zeros, which they have given us. And then the last is our function value. Now, uh, as you can see, our degree is 2, and they've only given us one zero. Well, that's, uh, that's okay, because what we know is since it's an imaginary zero, that it has to come uh, in pairs. So we'll say, this is also going to be tricky when you, uh, when you write uh, an imaginary zero that has two terms, you need to subtract it from x and make it look just like this. So not only is this going to be uh, one of our zeros, but we also have 2 minus 3i. So the way that we would write that in our problem would be x minus uh, 2 uh, minus 3i. And before we multiply, we're going to go ahead and distribute that to our problem. So we'll say x minus 2 minus 3i, and then this will be x minus 2 plus 3i. Again, if you ever end up with things like this, make sure you multiply the conjugates first, because then uh, some of the i's will cancel and make your problem a little bit easier to swallow. And uh, as you can see, as we start multiplying, you'll understand why that's going to help. So when we do this, we'll get x squared uh, minus 2x plus 3ix and then you'll get negative 2x plus 4 and then minus 6i and then you'll get negative 3ix uh, you'll get a plus 6i and then lastly you'll get negative 9i squared okay now we're just going to combine some like terms and see if we can't find some things that might be able to cancel uh, this and this are opposites those are opposites uh, and then the last thing is i squared we know i squared is negative 1 so negative i squared is going to be a positive 9. So when you work all this out, what you should get is f of x is equal to a, parentheses, x squared minus 4x and then plus 13. So that's our polynomial. Now I've just made this one up, so we'll see if it works or not. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to plug in 1 for all the x's and set it equal to negative 3. So we'll say negative 3 is equal to a, parentheses, 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 13. Again, this could be a little bit ugly, but we'll try to survive. Uh, this will be 1 minus 4, so negative 3, so we'll get a nice little positive 10 here. Hopefully if I did my math right. Looks like that's okay. And so A in our problem, we'll get A to be a negative 3 tenths. So our polynomial will look a little something like this. When we take that and plug it in and multiply it, you're going to multiply this by negative 3 tenths. So we'll get negative 3 tenths of x squared. And then negative 3 tenths times that will give us plus, uh, we can simplify. So it'll be 12, so it'll be 6 fifths x. And then lastly, when you multiply those two together, you get minus 39 tenths. Like I said, a little ugly just because I made up the problem, but hopefully you get the idea.